Share us at Coconut Candy because we just did this story. UOG, what was it? One in five coconut trees are have rhino beetle. That's their version of COVID. Yeah. Rhino beetle infestation. So, guys, cherish that coconut candy. Do it sustainably. Don't eat. Should we just, Monica, should we just stop eating coconut candy for a minute just to. No, we have to use the resource before uh, we lose it. A lot of the reasons why rhino beetle is able to be so prolific is that we don't clean our trees and we don't take the leaves off and then we don't properly handle the composting uh, where the larvae are. So it's really important that we actually use the coconuts before we lose the coconuts, uh, the nizuk, if that makes any sense. I'm going to be making a lot of coconuts. I think we today. just got a t-shirt. We just got a new t-shirt. Use the coconuts or lose the coconuts. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, Palau had rhino beetles, Thailand had rhino beetles, and they, they still um, actively use, they don't go to the store to buy coconut milk or buy coconut water. So I think it's a big part of how they've been actively been able to um, be resilient against rhino beetle threats is because they still have really intimate relationships with their resource. Use it or lose it. Got it. Okay. But one in five, that's pretty devastating. Right, yeah. What I'm thinking about is the tuba game. I think it's only like one in ten Chamorros know how to husk a coconut, though. So, <laughs> it's hard. I tried no, to do that. <laughs> right, we got to do an outreach. Maybe you guys should do an outreach <laughs> or bring on the Barcina sisters with their freaking coconut stabber thing. You you gave me one of those. Yeah, uh, stabber yeah. Thingies. Bree uses it as a self defense weapon. I actually do. You, you take it when you go walking, right? <laughs> She's like, "Come on, I I want you to come on." I'm waiting to chaggy it. <laughs> 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 okay, girl, let me know when you chaggy it, girl. <laughs> All right. We've got to get serious now. I'll drop off some coconuts for you. Practice, right? Every week you can try it so you can practice. <laughs> uh, 709. So uh, who we got with us today, Monica? The Micronesia Climate Hi. Change Alliance. Go ahead, go ahead. Hi, my name is Monyaka. I'm with um, Micronesia Climate Change Alliance. Good morning, Wahan. I have with me Jasmine Flores Cantrell. She is uh, the founder of Numatlu Refillery, which we're excited to talk about and share with the island today, and also with the founder of Micronesia Climate Change Alliance, Michelle Vacolo. Morning, ladies. We'll just start. Hey. Let's go start with, with Jasmine Flores Cantrell. I have no idea what a refillery is. Yeah, a Ooh, mobile yeah, zero waste refillery. refillery. Uh, I believe there has been a very small refillery process going on on Guam before uh, before Numalu opens, but a refillery is a convenient way to shop for bulk products without the packaging. So. The best kind of analogy I can think about of it is like back in the day when milkmen used to come and deliver, you know, milk bottles and then mm. you'd use the milk and then you'd return the bottles outside of your door to be refilled. Same sort of process, but um, we encourage people to bring their own containers to reuse, fill up with products. So that way you don't have the packaging. So so what does Numa Numalu mean? Sorry. Yeah, nice question. Um, Numalo, it, it means to revive or uh, to return to. So, like I said, this isn't something new. It's just been something that kind of uh, died out as consumerism grew. Um, and it's something that we believe we should return to. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that this mobile zero waste refillery, uh, you plan on uh, launching this in September, that's just a few months away, right? So, what exactly um, is it? I mean, what yeah, you guys what, offering? What can we refill? You know, yeah, because I mean, the milkman analogy <laughs> might have been lost on some of the audience, but I, I'll say it was Orange Crush back in the day for us when we were young. We would get a case of the Orange Crush, which came in what was called glass bottles, mm -hmm. and then we would drink the sodas and. Um, we would trade in the glass bottles and get money. Mm. <laughs> and some days we would go pick aluminum cans. Yeah, we have no shame. We're hustlers. Me and my cousins, we go pick aluminum cans. Uh, so yeah, it is kind of a return to the old way. But uh, since we didn't have the milkman dropping glass bottles of milk on our doorstep, uh, what type of uh, refill refilling are you guys going to be doing when you stand this program up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
Um, MCC has been doing a lot to address the waste crisis on our island. Last month in April, we worked a lot with KOAM to air our education series from our Nanas for our Nannies, which really took a deep dive into the trash issues on our islands. And you guys also as well did dirt, uh, trash talks where you went to illegal dump sites. And we recognize this as a giant problem for our island. We create 600,000 pounds of trash every single day for such a small island and a small population. That's way too much trash. And everything that, and most of that trash is single use plastics. So, this refillery and a lot of the other strategies that we're bringing forth to the community is to really like face this trash problem and the waste creation problem um, head on. And the refillery, which Jasmine will talk a lot more about, is just one of the, one of the strategies and solutions that we're uh, wanting to build for our community and it's a zero waste store so that you don't aren't buying shampoos soaps in the bottles in the plastic mm. bottles anymore but you can actually buy them and refill your containers um every single week or month however, however often you need them so is it like and a you, lot of other products. i'm just trying to get the visual here so is it like you go in when this is stood up you go in and you guys have like a big tunky of shampoo and you've it's a van, right? It's it's a car. Yeah, that you guys gonna be driving around. I know it's probably hard to imagine because it really is a new concept. Um, but the idea is you we're gonna come up like pop up style a couple times around the island, and we're also gonna do home deliveries. So you would come with your containers, ideally, you know, like uh, washed out old pickle jars, um, butter containers, or your old laundry uh, bin, and mm. then you see all the products. They will be in big bulk containers. Um, and then we fill your containers with whatever product you like. The advantage of this is because you're not buying the packaging, you're also not paying for it. So the way that we price the products is we actually weigh it and we charge per ounce. And then you just you just uh, pay for how much you get, not for the packaging. So what type of uh, products do you guys plan on having in the van? So for now, uh, just household products and also personal products. So Manyaka mentioned shampoo, conditioner, lotion, toner, uh, facial oil, anything you can think of like that, but also household products like cleaners, uh, laundry detergent, uh, all-purpose spray, and maybe even some things to help people do DIY, uh, make their own cleaners like vinegar, baking soda, washing powder, essential oils. These are just some things. Wow. Uh, so are these products like you know made on guam type of products right or do you got to yeah. deal with like tide or something yeah first and foremost we aim to source locally and support small businesses there's actually a ton of eco-friendly businesses on guam that are making some amazing products and they deserve to be highlighted and really recognized so we aim to source local and for those things that we cannot find here on island, I'm hoping that we can find at least within the Marianas, uh, Micronesia, and if we have to, maybe partnering with sister islands to like Polynesia, if we need to. I like what you said about the washed out old pickle jar, because I think, I don't know, I'm pretty sure you do, Brie. It's like every time you I buy something, I mean, I try not to get big containers and stuff, but I'm always figuring out how can I use that? Don't throw that away, we can use that. No, I got like tons of mason jars. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> me too. <laughs> well, yeah, I know you do. Yeah. Uh, Monica, I saw in your, you put out a release uh, yesterday, uh, and you also talked about you know, one of our pet peeves, um, illegal dumping, and how you guys are combating that through uh, the use of culture. Yeah. So we're really excited to launch this. Um, at first, small little community initiative with uh, the community in Gilbaza. Um, there's lots of really great cultural wisdoms of that people of the people from that area that we're excited to build with. So um, we did two cleanups in April in the Challenge Ramirez Jigo area, and it was so disheartening that every time we did a cleanup, the very next day there was more trash, and we cl we cleared 40 cubic. Uh, for a four cubic ton um, trash container, which cost us $400 in one day, in less than a day, in a few hours. 
So we really want to, people, outside people coming into that community and doing a cleanup is just a band-aid. It doesn't really address this, the, the issue. So we really are wanting to work with the people from that area to gain insight and to really build solutions from the ground up there. And one of the things that we're hoping to do was by launching this uh, fresh craft, fresh local craft uh, cooperative is to fund ideas that they have in the community, whether it be signage or cameras or um, even getting gas cards and coupons for people to take truckloads themselves to the, uh, the transfer station. There's a multiple ways that we can um, help resource these, these uh, under-resourced areas to address the issue themselves and, and for them to build the solutions and be a part of the solutions rather than other people coming in and just doing band-aid cleanups. So we're really excited to work with the Yang Fang family um, who are from Yap and, mm. and some other families in the Gilbaza area. And once we get a really good like uh, ordering and distribution system, we also hope to uh, engage with people in the Zero Down community and the Cypher community, which all live around that Chalon Ramirez way to really be the leaders in building this, the community solutions for the, the illegal dumping issue. There's been so much emphasis from our government on enforcement and on punishment of illegal dumping, and we really hope to build some sort of positive, um, positive reinforcements and to build steward ideas and, and, and uh, values of stewardship mm. with the community in that area and leaning into our cultural traditional knowledge is definitely something that we're excited to do what do they say that. you know because i mean you're right you've done a bunch of cleanups the jigo mayor's done a bunch of cleanups in that area but when you when you get down and you talk to the people who live there what do they say because uh, um, i mean i got i don't want to put anyone on the spot but i'm pretty sure there are some people who do live there who are dumping uh, but what, so like, what's the vibe some with people some people were passing by and they like got out of their cars and helped us. Other people like dropped us drinks and and were just really thankful for us um, that we came in to the community to help them in that way. But when I was speaking to people in a, in a more in-depth conversation, they do recognize that this is a problem that um, is just continuous and that they also recognize that it's people who don't even live there, that that's because it's a known dump spot. Mm. There's people from other areas in Machinano or in Agathagumas that come over and just dump bigger items like their cars or their refrigerators in that area because they don't see anybody having um, any repercussions for doing that sort of stuff. So they recognize that it's that their communities may have an issue, may be a part of that issue, but there's also other people just because it is a known site where they haven't seen anyone get in trouble or whatever, um, that other people are also coming into that area. So they wanna start modeling better behaviors for everybody. Mm -hmm. And you also have this uh, upcycling single-use plastic, uh, the Precious Plastics Pilot Program. That's a lot of peas. The PPP. Precious P -P. Pilot <laughs> Program. Pr 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 the four Yeah, P's. Michelle. <laughs> That's how you say it, the acronym. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's a really long, no, really point long. Points for alliteration. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Micronesia Precious Plastics Pirate Pilot Program, MP, MP4 for short. Um, <laughs> so have, um, I know it's, su it's super long. Um, we have a set of four machines. Um, they're Precious Plastics machines. Precious Plastics is actually an international initiative that started out of Europe. It was created by a man named Dave Hackins who um, wanted to help um, areas like ours who don't have um, access to um, adequate recycling. And so he developed these machines and he released the blueprints online. So it's totally open source. Anybody can go on to the website, download the blueprints and um, actually build the machines themselves. Um, we we didn't build our machines though, um, but but anyone can. And, and so our machines grind, melt, and inject um, two types of plastic, plastic number two and plastic number five. Um, and we create different products with it, like magnets, keychains. Um, our most popular ones are plant pots, coasters, um, that sort of thing. Where, where, do you, where do we get these? Yeah. 
Um, so we're selling online right now, um, our different items. And we've also had a few pop-ups um, and um, we've done a pop-up, I would say once or twice a month for the last few months. Mm. Um, but we would like to sell them in the stores. That's our goal. Um, and reaching out to different um, local, you know, vendors here and seeing if we can sell them out of there. But yeah, right now we're just kind of popping up and selling them online. This sounds pretty, uh, well, I mean, it's not like I'd love to see the video of this machine. Like, how does it work? Mm -hmm. um, so we have a, so first, like we have the plastic. We have, we can only accept clean plastic. Um, so then we have to cut down the plastic. Um, like for example, if we get a laundry detergent bottle, we have to actually cut down the laundry detergent bottle into small pieces, like around this big. And then we have a shredder. So then we take those pieces and we shred them and then they are shredded into teeny tiny little flakes. Um, and then each of our machines has, it's like a hopper of sorts. And so we dump those flakes into the hopper um, and then and then the machine heats it up and then we have an injection machine. So we either will inject that melted plastic into a mold um, or we have a, a machine called an extruder machine. Um, and in which case the plastic will come out into like a long string and then we wrap that string around a mold and then that's how we create our plant pots. Wow. Get us some video of that. That sounds pretty cool. I feel like I could zone yeah. out watching that. Bree just punched something up. Sorry, it's okay. Off. Um, no, you. No, I was trying to find because I. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Let me try and turn this off. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to uh, Google you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't feel Bree's over here googling you. <laughs> on the side. Uh, well, that's pretty cool. But now, I just wanted to bring you guys on because you shot out this release and. I mean, you guys are doing the things, you know, that, that need to get uh, done. I mean, even with the, this plastics science mm -hmm. conversion machine thing, I mean, that's freaking cool. Like, yeah. what? So how do the keychains look? Did you bring a sample? Okay, let me let me get you one. I have one on my keychain. Hold on one second. Of course you do. Yeah, this, uh, I wanted to go back to the, the refillery because it says that, you know, this fundraising campaign, you guys are going to be launching it. Uh, do you guys have any additional information on how, I mean, because obviously this is all going to take, you know, money and, and support. Right, yeah. Did you hit up Phil Flores? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I can't, I didn't even mention that. Yeah, we just launched, I believe, four days ago. Um, so it is live, and if you want to access it, you should visit uh, New Motley Refillery's Instagram page, which is just at New Motley Refillery. Um, and it's in our little bio. There's a link in our bio. We'll also be adding that to our uh, Micronesia Climate Change Alliance link tree. But if you go to Indiegogo and you search New Motley Refillery, you'll, uh, it will come up. Um, we're trying to raise $10,000 to get our initial stock to make. Uh, we had a van donated to us by Micronesia Renewable Energy. So we need to do some retrofitting to that van so that it can fit all the containers and can um, uh, we're going to need to take the seats out and do a whole fix to make it a running refillery. And that's going to cost the money. And then also getting the startup inventory is going to cost the money. But this is really going to divert lots of trash from going to Lazen Landfill. The more we get some more customers and um, more people wanting to start and initiate a zero waste journey or a low waste journey, which is so important because everything almost everything that goes to the dump is really only used for a few minutes whether it's a plastic spoon or a king car bottle or um uh mr brown can all those things we only use for a few seconds and then it's in our landfill forever you know so for having everybody to just kind of shift and be more conscious is so imp is also really important to micronesia climate change alliance that's why we did our um, from our Nana's Forum in any series. And we also hope with Jasmine to be doing a lot more DIY low waste um, workshops when she's here. She's an educator, I'm an educator. So we really uh, do value and know the importance of education and getting into the community and doing hands-on workshops. So these uh, supporting these efforts also really helps to support um, 
future efforts in which we get to really make a bigger dent in this big issue of trash. Baby steps. Right on. Um, I hope you guys can get to the point where, you know, you can have like a, a summer camps, you yeah. know, and things like that where you can learn, send our children. Um, I like this refillery thing. I'm thinking yeah. like down the road, we have, you know, big 55 gallon drums of Finadeni and then you just bring your thing and you, <laughs> fill it, you know what I mean? That's what I'm thinking. The evolution That's of it, you know? Thinking. Coconut I'm oil. Every house needs rice. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Yes, refill your dynasty. <laughs> That's it, you know. <laughs> Give me two pumps on that, right on. Oh, All right, don't ladies. get him started. Yeah, don't, don't I've already him. started, Bree. Yeah, Thanks. and also right. for our lay, our, our fresh muer or lays, it's graduation season. Right. It's also like you know the summer's coming up. It's wedding season. There's always um, uh, bridal showers and baby showers, and really to complete your island celebrations you need really need to incorporate some fresh local flowers so if you'd like to order some of our fresh products we also have coconut product coconut woven products too like baskets and hats um, these funds go directly to the crafters themselves and also to our initiative to curb illegal dumping in Chalon ramirez area uh, so please check up our link in our in our instagram bio or our link tree and there's an order form and we'll be happy to help um, beautify your celebrations for your loved ones who are graduating or um, or are um, experiencing a milestone in their life. So we really would really appreciate the, the support for the Nomatli Revillery fundraising campaign and for that and also purchasing our precious plastics and watching our From Our Nanas For Our Nannies, which has such amazing content and information. Oh, and Michelle's chain. holding up our um, keychain right now. Can you pop her on uh, solo, Joe? Hold on, Michelle. Can you show it to us again? Yeah, and that's made out of detergents, right, Michelle? It's made out of like gain, a mixture of gain detergents and Tide detergents, and so yeah, we take a lot of things that are plastics number two and hold number it, five. Hold it up. Hold it up. I'm sorry, Monica. Hold it up again, Michelle. Yeah, we're trying to get a shot of it. Yeah. And pop it up. Michelle, if you could hold yeah. it. There you go. Um, you got it, Joe. That's it. Nice, nice, nice. Wow. Okay, so we can just go to the Micronesia Climate Change um, Alliance Instagram page and we can uh, find all the information about Nomalu and the MP4, right? Wait, did I say that right? MP4? Yep, MP4, MP4, or you can just say... Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys so much for helping us to promote our initiatives and our programs to um, make our island and our future a better place. Hey, Amen. You guys are doing great work. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Cheers, Masi. Agumas. Okay. There you go. MCCA. I like this. We bring Winneka on. I'm like, hey, can you come on? And she's like, can I bring some people? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, I need to bring them on more often to c continue, you know, spreading awareness. Hey, Amen. You know, but there are changes that, you know, if, and they're, maybe they're so gradual that you don't even notice. But like one of the changes, because I was doing the malfunction, like, and so one of my rituals going in was I would get, you know, two Mr. Browns and two bottles of water. And that continued for like, God, 10 years I did that every morning. And, mm -hmm. and I started thinking about, I had this nightmare once where I was like, I went to hell, but the hell was that, um, don't- Mr. Camp, Mr. Brown Camps or something. Yeah, the hell was that I was drowned by every piece of trash that I produced in my life, like everything, you know, from toilet paper to, and it was a bad nightmare. And so then it was like, man, all these water bottles and all this stuff. So you, you start using like your flask or whatever, you know what I mean? So if you eliminate like one item of waste from what you do, I mean, whether it's daily or just, you know, like I said, gradually, like I didn't even notice. I mean, look at us today. We're using a flask. We're using these cups that you, you know, like this, what do you call this? Yeti thing. I mean, I hope it's okay. I don't know. I I feel like sometimes when we try and do the right thing environmentally, then you find out that, oh, Yeti. Oh, that's made by six-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I guess it just things happen gradually uh, over time. And, and it's the little, the work that, uh, not little work, but the things that they do to kind of like change the mindset, right? I mean, it might not happen today. It might not happen tomorrow, but um, it has been happening and it'll keep happening if that made any sense at all. Yeah, all right, it okay. made sense. Yeah. 
All right, so we're going to take a break. Uh, we're coming back with Nick Lee of the Guam Environmental Protection Agency next, right here on the link.